Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, Per, I propose that we, we start the, the webinar. Okay, very good. Thanks, Jacques. So, yeah, good morning, um, everyone uh, from uh, Paris and IA headquarters. My name is uh, Per Anders Fidel. I'm the program manager at the uh, IA's Energy Technology Policy Division. I'm part of the coordination team for the SEMS Electrical Vehicle Initiative. I'm also the contact point within the IA for the, uh, the GEF uh, Global E Mobility Program. It's my great pleasure to kick off this webinar and this very exciting presentation of IA's new tool on EV charging and, and grid integration. So EV charging and grid integration has become a focus area of the agency. Uh, almost a year ago, we launched a policy brief uh, on public charging infrastructure. And this is very much a comprehensive uh, overview of the EV e ecosystem of uh, public charging infrastructure, as well as some key recommendations uh, for how to ensure an efficient uh, deployment. This was then followed up in December, uh, where we launched a policymakers manual uh, aimed for policymakers for how effectively integrate electrical vehicles into the grid. Today, uh, as a companion to those two uh, knowledge products, we launch an interactive tool uh, where you, a policymaker, a network planner, a utility staff member, a researcher, or whatever function you have in the EV ecosystem, uh, can take a look at how uh, EV charging impacts uh, the power system. And we hope it to help you analyze whether the grid needs needs to be strengthened, strengthened to accommodate, uh, accommodate uh, charging in a wide variety of circumstances tailored to your own needs. So uh, we, of course, uh, are very pleased to have this chance to present this work. Very much thanks to the support from the, the Jeff and uh, all the partners of the, the Jeff Global E-Mobility Program, which we are a happy uh, partner to. This particular deliverable is an output of uh, Working Group 4, which looks very much at uh, charging infrastructure and grid integration, but also batteries. And we're very much looking forward to working with colleagues uh, in ADB, in UNEP, uh, in EBRD, and uh, Centro Maru Molina for dissemination of these tools in various regions of the world. However, let me also take the, a moment to thank the, the members of the Electrical Vehicle Initiative, 16 leading countries uh, when it comes to EV deployment under the Clean Energy Ministerial. EV charging and grid integration has certainly been a topic of the key priorities for all these governments too. Might have different policy cha challenges, but it seems to one of them that also brings them all together is when it comes to uh, effective policies, when it comes to both the deployment uh, of EV charging, but also figuring out what's the most effective way to for the integration of EVs into the grid and ensuring enough uh, grid uh, capacity. So uh, we, and in the spirit of the work of international collaboration, we hope to bring together not only energy ministries, but also ministries responsible for transport policies under this work, under the, the Jeff work, under the EVI work, but also, of course, under the work of the IA. With those words, it's my great pleasure to hand over to my, my dear colleagues, uh, uh, Jacques Varishe and Andreas Bong uh, to, for the presentation. Uh, but before that, of course, just to say a few words on housekeeping. Uh, so as you, you might have figured out, this will be a recorded event. And uh, if you have any comments uh, or questions, we ask you to use the Q&A option here in the, the Zoom. So with those words, uh, over to you, Jacques and, and Andreas, uh, to take us through this very exciting presentation. Thank you, Per. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Jacques Warichet. Uh, I am an analyst in the Renewable Integration Secure Electricity Unit of the IA, and I am here together with my colleague Andreas Bank uh, to present this tool uh, that we are launching today. The presentation will give first an overview of why we developed this tool, uh, in which context it falls. Uh, we will present the features of the tool, uh, and uh, Andreas will give you a live demonstration to follow. And there should be time for 20 minutes approximately of questions and answers at the end of our presentation. So feel free to use the Q&A box uh, at the bottom of your Zoom window and we will address your questions after our presentation. Thank you very much. So 
This tool has been developed in the framework of the global program to support uh, countries in the shift uh, to electric mobility. Um, this program has been uh, launched by the UN Environment Program and is supported also by the Global Environment Facility, GEF. Um, it contains four uh, thematic working groups. Uh, one of them is dedicated to charging grid integration, power supply and batteries. And uh, I am the coordinator of this working group. These four working groups are delivering uh, knowledge products on specific thematic uh, areas uh, corresponding to the working group scope. And they are also collaborating with regional platforms, which try to um, disseminate uh, the work done under the working groups, uh, create uh, um, communities of um, practice and uh, networking in their respective regional uh, scope. The program has been designed with a focus on low to middle income countries, and therefore, um, uh, most of these regions are um, located in uh, areas where there is a, a need for these countries to be supported. Uh, in addition, of course, uh, there are country projects. There are over 30 today. Uh, most of them are already um, in progress, where they will do on-site demonstration and benefit from the knowledge developed in all the rest of the program. So the motivation to shift towards electric mobility uh, for countries uh, can uh, find um, a lot of different meanings. Uh, for some, it's uh, to improve air quality, uh, dependence, uh, reduce the dependence to imported fossil fuels, uh, or uh, to uh, contribute to climate mitigation. Uh, if we look at the uh, greenhouse gases uh, from uh, road transport, um, from well to real, so including the construction, the use, the recycling of all the materials, uh, and of course, um, the, uh, the working um, operation of the, of the vehicles. Uh, we see that uh, EVs already today uh, bring some uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions, uh, but these will uh, increase in the future. Um, in 2021, we estimate that 40, 000, um, uh, 40 million tons sorry, of CO2 emissions have been uh, avoided thanks to um, use of EVs instead of uh, combustion cars. And uh, in our scenarios by 2030, we estimate between 460 uh, million tons and uh, 740 million tons uh, the avoided emissions. But uh, there is a strong dependence uh, during the operation of the vehicles on the electricity mix. That means uh, what uh, the power sector uh, generation is. And this is why the decarbonization of the power sector will be also one way to accelerate uh, the decarbonization of transport. If we look um, a bit more in detail on um, the, the power sector, um, the electrification of transport and other energy uses uh, will have quite an impact. Um, we uh, see, first of all, that there will be a strong need for um, cross-sectoral collaboration at the institutional level. And this is why we also want to bring attention on the power sector um, needs uh, to uh, mobility people and vice versa. But uh, we can see notably that the electric vehicles will bring an increase in the demand for electricity. Um, and uh, for example, in uh, advanced economies, the electricity demand has been uh, stagnating for the last decades. But now with uh, electrification of road transport, among others, but also with heat pumps, uh, this uh, will increase. In other economies, uh, of course, electrification uh, will contribute to uh, the strong growth of uh, electricity demand in the next decades. So let's look at uh, some numbers here. In 2021, the demand of electricity for EV charging was 55 terawatt hours. Uh, that is more or less 0.5% of the global electricity demand or the equivalent of the um, electricity demand of a country like Switzerland. But uh, already in 2022, I can anticipate the numbers that will be released soon. This number has already doubled. We have uh, estimated to 110 terawatt hours the demand of electricity for EV charging. 
If we look ahead towards 2030, uh, in our um, uh, sorry, ad announced pledge scenario, which is actually the scenario that uh, corresponds to the climate pledges made by all the countries together, we see that already the demand will be 1,100 terawatt hours in 2030. That means 10 times more than in 2022, 20 times more than in 2021. And that will be more or less 4% of the electricity demand. The uh, demand uh, for this electricity uh, will be very different uh, according to the countries. And you can see in red, for example, that China is already quite a significant chunk of that demand. Uh, since they are uh, way ahead of the other countries in terms of electricity, um, electrification of road transport. The, the different countries have actually uh, a very different fleet uh, of the current um, or all uh, fuels combined um, roads uh, mean, uh, transport means. Um, so that means that um, every segment will also have its own need for charging solutions. And as a policy maker, uh, there is a need to identify uh, the priorities and um, develop uh, the necessary charging infrastructure and look at the impacts on the grid of these uh, different uh, um, approaches that will be taken. Uh, so um, we wanted to support this exercise uh, because we believe um, planning uh, for the uptake of electricity vehicles will be a necessity and that needs to be done together uh, between uh, mobility people and um, uh, core sector people. So um, this is the reason why we developed a tool which is interactive and available, uh, will be available uh, later today on our website. Uh, we had three main motivations. The first one was uh, to tell or to be able to uh, look at the impact of EV charging on the uh, power system. The second one was to also look at the possible measures for mitigating these impacts and to help assess uh, these um, uh, EV charging uh, impacts. And finally, also try to give an overview or um, an estimate of what the CO2 emissions would be um, when we charge uh, electric vehicles. So uh, to achieve the first goal, uh, we have developed um, a simulation of the charging behavior that uh, releases a weekly profile of the EV charging. Um, the second module uh, does the same thing, but with the possibility to implement some managed charging solution. We call it managed charging any strategy that shifts uh, the moment or modulates the power of charging in order to make the charging more grid friendly. And we will see that more in detail in a, mem in a minute. And finally, um, we also implemented a simplified uh, electricity mix uh, representation uh, to enable uh, the estimation of the CO2 emissions. So let's look now more in detail on how the tool works uh, before we will go to the demonstration. So um, the uh, charging of electric vehicle uh, from the perspective of the grid, um, doesn't only uh, look at energy. So if we, we need a, a certain amount of energy to charge uh, our battery, uh, this is um, useful information, but uh, to be able to assess a bit more in detail the impact on the system, we need to look at the power which is withdrawn from the grid at different moments in time. This is why uh, we needed to look at much more in detail on the different charging solutions which are implemented and actually every charging solution has its own separate impacts, um, depending on which segment of vehicles we are talking about, what chargers are used, and at which moment of the day uh, the power is withdrawn from the grid. If we look at um, the different uh, possibilities, there are quite a few, as uh, you can see on this picture. Some of them are, have a higher impact, uh, while others have a lower impact. And this depends not only on the characteristics are just cited, but also on the characteristics of the grid. So if we look, for example, at a simple case where we have uh, 1,000 private cars charging preferably at home, we can see the blue peaks, which correspond uh, every day at the evening charging uh, when people come back from work and recharge their car as soon as they come home. 
Uh, and uh, if on top of that, we um, give the possibility or we have chargers on the highway or on the roads where um, the power is much higher, uh, but the price must be higher, so the preference to charge there is lower, um, we can also have uh, the uh, green uh, small peaks, uh, which are actually the events where people charge during the day uh, at different uh, moments or at different locations. So. Um, we uh, did that through, um, so how to put that into the tool, um, I will then let um, Andreas explain how to use the tool to represent this simple case. Um, yeah, hello and also welcome from my side. I will explain the, the tool based on, on an example and give also some background information and modulation um, and the modulation procedure of, of the tool. So first to the example, um, we have a fleet of 1000 private cars and in the tool, there's one section to enter the fleet. So you could enter a, a label to make the fleet unique. Then you could also enter the stock of the, of the, of the fleet, so the number of vehicles um, and the battery capacity and the energy consumption that could be uh, different in different countries and for different uh, types of electric cars. And also, and that's the first um, important and a more advanced thing, you could also enter the driving behavior, the driving pattern, uh, driving pattern of the of the fleet. And here you could also make a different difference between the um, weekday and the weekend, because normally or typically the driving behavior at weekdays and weekends is different. Um, so that's the fleet and the, the driving pattern of the fleet, and that's the first input um, in the tool. Um, Um, now, one step back more to the modulation. So, as explained, that was um, the driving patterns, and these driving patterns uh, correspond to the uh, to the charging needs. So, in the tool, there are on the ones on the on the one side there are charging needs, um, and on the other side there are charging opportunities. And these charging opportunities are characterized by uh, different charging location types. So, typically, the EV driver could charge at home, but also at work. Um, there could be some destination charging, or road, road uh, side charging, uh, and route is also possible. Um, and for buses, there could be also opportunity charging. And you, now you see there are two sides of charging needs and also ch charging opportunities. And the task for the tool is now to uh, find out uh, where the charging needs um, are uh, covered. So at which charging location or with which charging opportunities the, the needs are supplied, uh, and that is uh, the main idea of the of the tool. That the charging preference uh, is the, the connection between the charging needs and the charging opportunities. Um, and then, in addition, the tool is it's weekly based. That uh, that means, as my colleague explains, that you get a weekly based profile, and for that we defined or the tool is based on different input for weekdays and weekends. I show. That before for the for the driving pattern, it's very similar to the child for the charging behavior, um, and that is why uh, typically the, the behavior is different. For example, at weekdays there's um, more home and work charging, and at weekend there could be also destination charging and something like that. Um, and uh, one more thing, so the the tool is also uh, fleet based. That means that the input are based on fleet and also the output. So the idea is not that the tool provide single um, and unique uh, uh, individual charging profiles for, for uh, uh, single vehicles, it's for the whole fleet. Uh, but in the modulation procedure, there are some steps um, where individual checks for each vehicle um, uh, happens. And that's, for example, to, to check if there's any flexibility for managed charging. Um, now let's... Uh, Go ahead with the uh, with the tool and the charging behavior. So we already have uh, we have already defined the fleet, and now we have to define the uh, the charging behavior. And here first availability. The availability means here how many vehicles could charge at a certain at a certain location type, and we have um, these five location types. Um, and for each location type, um, you could enter a charging power, so the available charging power for these location type and the availability 
for uh, for weekday and weekend. And this availability is uh, should be entered based on the uh, on the charging infrastructure, um, but also on the um, accessibility during the entered times um, in the next uh, in the in the next slide. So, um, as I explained, besides uh, availability, there's also the preference. And the preference decides at which location types the EV driver uh, will charge. And for each location type, uh, the, the user could choose the preference. The total preference um, has to be 100% because each EV driver has exactly one um, preferred location type. Typically, there's a high, look, uh, high preference for, for home charging. And the, the background for the, for the preference is often the, um, the costs of electricity and also what or where charging is uh, comfortable. For example, it's, it's easier to charge at home than charging to an end location and charge there. Um, and so that's the preference. And uh, as I um, uh, explained before, there are also typically uh, typical charging times and they are linked to the availability. So the availability means that at these times, um, there is uh, there are available charging slots for the EV drivers, um, and for each location to type the uh, the tool user could enter different values. So uh, for weekday and also for weekend. So there's uh, arrival time, and there's also the variance, and then there's by normal distribution. Uh, there's the calculation by normal distribution. Um, thereby each vehicle gets their own uh, arrival time. Um, and there's also uh, a typical stay time, and thereby the charging events could be uh, could be calculated, and um, yeah, there's a determination of possible charging windows. So now here we see uh, the results for these um, uh, for these inputs I entered before, and here you see um, uh, very high um, home charging. That was because we have a high home availability and preference and the the charging take place in the early evening and um, uh, during this time there's also the non ev electricity demand uh, peak because of cooking lighting in some countries also heating and that could lead to an overload of the grid and also um, that the power system uh, of that expensive thermal units have to run because there's a high peak um, from the EV and also from the non-electricity, uh, um, non-EV electricity demand. Sorry. Um, so now let's change a little bit the inputs of the tool. So as I explained um, before, the availability of um, of home charging was really high, um, and it was 90 percent. So 90 percent of the EV drivers was. Um, available uh, was able to charge at home. Uh, Sixty could charge at work. Sixty percent could charge at uh, at at work, and uh, fifty percent at um, in in public. So here, destination charging. And now let's imagine we the inv investigation is now in the city, and there typically are not so many parking stations next to the home, and that's why um, here the charging infrastructure. Uh, is characterized by more destination charging in the city, so a lot, lots of sports and uh, leisure activities. And that's why we have now an availability of 80% uh, for destination charging. And um, here is the base scenario, and now you see the change to the uh, to the new inputs, and you see that the, um, that the home charging um, decrease and the public charging um, increase. And um, yeah, that shows that the EV load could be really various for different scenarios, and that the power system and also in the network must be able to um, manage these different situations. Um, and there could be also a an, an real high ramp up of the of the of the charge uh, of the charging uh, processes and events. Um, now let's um, go to the preference. Before there was a really high preference for charging at home um, of 80%. And now let's imagine that the government 
set some in incentives for work charging because they are and notice or recognize that it could be helpful for a power system to charge during the daytime. Um, and so the costs for, for a work charging uh, would, be, uh, would decrease. And that's why the people would charge um, at workplace. Uh, so the preference for workplace charging is much higher now. And uh, the base scenario again, and now the, the changed inputs. And here you see as expected that the the peak of the home charging decrease and the work um, charging uh, increase. And here you could see that uh, um, that there could be a better use of solar energy during the during the noon time. Um, uh, there could be all it could be also interesting to um, look at different um, behaviors of the of the EV drivers. So it uh, could be the case. Uh, that EV drivers wait for charging until the, say, the state, of, state of charge of the battery is uh, equal to 50%. Um, so in this example, 60% of the EV drivers wait for the charging. Uh, so that means that they are not directly recharge the, uh, the vehicle, for example, when the, when the last uh, trip was really uh, short. And um, here you see the impact, so as I explained, the base scenario and now the the new uh, scenario with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, EV drivers which wait um, for charging um, and now you see that the, the charging um, events are less intense. That means that the peak power is not so high, but the charging events become longer and that makes of course sense because the there are not so many charging events, but the, when uh, EV driver charge, the charging uh, event takes more time. So what we have looked at until now is uh, at the uh, charging of electric vehicles without any uh, measures to uh, shift or modify the charging. So this is what we call unmanaged charging. But um, to um, uh, increase the penetration of uh, EVs and uh, particularly the integration in the grid, uh, there are a lot of opportunities to do something different. So we call that uh, managed charging strategies. And actually, um, the uh, opportunities for um, managed charging will depend uh, also on another factor, which is the duration during which the vehicle will stay at the charger location. Uh, and in that case, um, if the vehicle stays long and the user doesn't need uh, the, um, the charging to be very fast and uh, immediate, uh, there is the possibility to postpone or to modulate the, the power. And that means that um, there is a, an opportunity for the system uh, for an increased flexibility. Uh, in the, on this graph now, you can see that, for example, home work uh, charging are uh, providing quite a high flexibility. Uh, because that's places where uh, usually the power is relatively low, but especially the duration of the stay is the longest. Um, so what happens if we, we use one of these strategies for managed charging? Uh, in this case, what we have done is uh, to apply what we would call balanced charging, which is um, um, uh, trying to uh, spread the charging energy uh, over the full duration of the uh, stay time of the vehicle. And what we see is that the peak is much less pronounced and therefore the requirement on having peak units to uh, provide the uh, electricity supply in the early evening is much more reduced. So um, uh, these managed charging um, strategies, especially this one uh, that uh, spreads the charging overnight instead of having an evening peak, uh, have a, a lot of benefits for the power system. It reduces the peak demand. Uh, it may reduce uh, grid congestions in local grids. Um, and uh, since we can also uh, benefit more from, in the case of daytime charging of uh, renewables, especially with solar, uh, we can also accelerate the carbonization with that. So the second module of our tool was implemented, um, implementing these charging uh, strategies. And uh, that's what uh, we will now detail more with you. Um, before we really apply the load management, uh, the managed charging uh, to the um, discussed example, I will uh, give a little bit more background to the to the modulation of the of the um, of the managed charging in the tool. So, first to to the main question, 
uh, in the tool is managed charging possible um, for different charging events. And um, so that is the main framework for applying the managed charging. And here there are three steps. First, there's a, the check of flexibility. So for each um, charging event in the tool, there's the energy required to charge. So the energy, the EV driver want to charge a certain amount of energy. And on the other side, there's the amount of energy which could could be charged during, uh, during this charging window. So for example, when uh, at home over the night, there's a really high uh, available energy because uh, the vehicle stays long at the um, at the home, so, and the difference between the energy between these required energy and these available energy is flexibility, because the EV driver uh, of the vehicle is able to uh, shift the charging, and it would not make a difference be uh, because at the um, at the departure time the vehicle would be fully charged. Um, that is the first question. So is there flexibility left for uh, managed charging? The next question is, um, or the next aspect is the participation rate. Because it's, um, there's a the question if all the infrastructure, if, if the infrastructure is able to participate in and manage charging and also are the EV drivers, um, if they want to participate in, uh, in managed charging. And that's why we include a participation wage for each location type. So the EV, um, the, the tool user could enter different participation rates for managed charging. And then the third step is to apply the real uh, managed, ma the managed charging measure. Now to the three managed charging measures we have implemented. So first to balance charging. Um, um, here the idea is, as my colleague explained, that you use the whole staying time for, for charging and reduce uh, the maximum charging power by, by use this whole uh, staying time uh, from arrival to departure. Um, so that's the first measure and the measure um, two uh, and three is about the time of use and um, smart charging. So this uh, both measures are related to charging depending on some reference profile. For the time of use, it's depending on some on some energy prices and tariffs. And for the smart charging, it's charging depending on the on the non EV electricity reference uh, demand. Um, and the idea is to uh, shift the energy to the time steps where the reference profile is really low. So, for example. Here for the time of use, uh, we postpone the charging to the time steps at the end of the of the charging window where the tariff is really low, and we only need a short interval at the beginning because for the lowest uh, for the lowest price, it's not possible to charge the whole vehicle. So that's the idea to shift uh, the energy depending on some reference curve. Um, yeah, so that are the three the three um, measures. Um, now back to our to our example, and let's imagine that um, the tool user uh, noticed that the peak power is really really high, and now um, the idea is to apply a balanced charging to decrease uh, uh, the peak power and use uh, the flexibility of of the of the situation. Um, and here um, the user has to uh, activate the balanced charging from unmanaged to balanced. And also, as I explained, there are different participation wage, uh, rates. Uh, in the example, the participation rate for, for home um, would be 70%. Here, assumption could be that there is some, uh, some of the charging infrastructure is not able to participate because of, uh, because of technical reasons. For the workplace, there could be a more newer charger, which are, um, which are able to participate. And for destination and in general public charging, the participation rate is is low because there's in general also not so many uh, so much flexibility. Um, so um, now uh, as a uh, as a well, back here you see the base scenario, so the unmanaged charging, and now the balanced charging. And here where you could see that there's a significant smoothing effect on demand. So the the peak power is reduced. Um, and so it could be easier to integrate the, the EVs now to the grid 
and so there would be a lower impact on the electricity supply capacity. And that shows uh, the potential of flexibility uh, in the grid. Uh, there is also a third module which allows to uh, estimate the uh, emissions of um, uh, dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, but this module is only available through an API, like uh, some other advanced charging solutions. Um, and uh, this API will be available by the end of the week, uh, meaning that uh, one user can uh, put in um, uh, input data uh, and uh, dialogue directly with the Python code, which will uh, give uh, as output the resulting uh, the results um, but that is uh, offline and not in the interactive tool <clears throat> so i will conclude with a few uh, key messages uh, on uh, on the electric mobility integration in the grid and uh, uh, how this tool supports it um, so the electrification of road transport is uh, something that we cannot be stopped now but um, it will also accelerate uh, as it contributes to decarbonizing um, our economies and uh, the, reduce the dependency to uh, fossil fuels. Um, EVs uh, and electrification of transport will increase uh, the need for electricity, but it's also an opportunity for the power sector thanks to its uh, flexibility. Uh, the power sector needs to accommodate a lot of uh, different uh, charging solutions, but uh, it should be encouraged to uh, have managed uh, charging uh, to uh, increase its uh, penetration and uh, grid integration. And it will, at the same time, support a higher rate of uh, growth of renewable. Uh, finally, uh, flexibility uh, needs to be incentivized from the early stages of uh, EV growth. Um, and we have for that a few recommendations in the policy manual for um, EV grid integration that we published in December. And um, we uh, acknowledge also the need uh, that grids will be expanded uh, to uh, deploy the needed charging infrastructure, but uh, it requires that um, the uh, different sectors collaborate together. Before we go to the demonstration, I wish to thank all the people who have contributed uh, from close or uh, a bit further uh, to this uh, tool and the uh, environment in which we are. Uh, the developers uh, are um, uh, Andreas here with me, uh, but also Luis, Yuha, and Juan Ho. Um, the tool specifications were developed by myself with my colleague Luis Lopez. Um, finally, uh, we received a lot of support from um, the team of communication to deploy the uh, interactive tool, but also uh, from a lot of colleagues who reviewed and supported the development of the tool through review and advice. So thank you very much for everyone. And now we will have a brief demonstration by Andreas before we uh, go to the um, questions that were posted in the Q&A uh, box. And uh, thank you very much for uh, posting questions. You can still continue doing so. Okay, now you should see my screen and uh, web tool. So first of all, you see here four different tabs. So the fleet, the behavior profiles, some advanced options, and uh, a tab to see the results. Um, let's um, start with an example. Um, I already um, have um, entered some values. So the label would be uh, the, the idea is that we now simulate an intra-city bus fleet in Chile. So that's why I put a label here. So the, the, the fleet uh, include 25 buses, the so battery capacity and energy consumption you could enter here. And they're also um, uh, the week, weekday and weekend driving. So that's the first tab. Um, then for the behavior, you could enter here different values. So for the, for the bus fleet, the idea is that the, or the, the idea of the the idea of the charging approach is that there's, um, that's a depot a location where the buses charge overnight. That's why um, there's availability of 100% um, at, at depot. And there's also um, the charging power, which um, is here 150 kilowatt. Um, here you could also uh, enter the, the different preferences. In this example, it's really easy because the preferences would be 100% um, for, for, for home charging because it's the only charging location type. 
And here are the different uh, time values. So in this example, we assume that the buses enter the uh, uh, arrive at the at the depot at 11 um, p.m. Uh, with the variance of one hour and stay six hours. And then you could see the results um, here. Of course, because of some probabilistic effects, you have some um, some difference between the different days when they arrive. So that's a normal distribution. So there's some um, probabilistic effects. Um, but um, let's imagine we, we recognize that the peak power is really high. And that's why we want to apply and uh, now the balance charging. So now we can go to advanced options. And here we could change from unmanaged to balanced charging and then go back to the results. And then you see that the, uh, the axis is in, uh, it's changed. So you see a different uh, shape um, as uh, the charge, the peak power is decreased, as the, the peak power decreased and, and the, the charging event uh, takes longer because of um, yeah, using the whole flexibility. Um, now let's go to a, a, a go ahead with this example, but with the un unmanaged case. And let's assume that the, the fleet operator um, gets some new buses and a second fleet with also 25, um, 25 buses with the same specifications uh, of the vehicle. So the vehicle types are, um, are the same. Um, and the idea is to uh, use the charging, the same charging infrastructure as in the example before. And that's why um, we need two different behavior profiles for the first fleet and for the second fleet. Um, for the first fleet, we have to um, change now the... Um, um, so go to group one. And for the first fleet, the, the idea is that we um, that the bus, buses arrival at 11 um, p.m. And they have only three hours to charge because the other three hours um, we are needed for the for the different for the second group, um, and so it's important that arrival time and also stay time it's related to the connection time to the grid. Um, for the for the second fleet, uh, you can uh, go to group two here, and here you see that the arrival time and that's when the when the uh, charging starts. It's now at P, uh, at 2 a.m., so three hours later. So we use the six hours staying time of the buses um, in two different groups. Um, and you could see the charging of the results here. So you see um, first uh, the charging of the, of the first fleet and then the charging of the second fleet. Um, and that's uh, how you could use the tool to, um, to uh, charge different fleets with the same charging infrastructure at different times. So it's important to see, uh, to understand that arrival time means connection time to the grid. Um, let's uh, go ahead with the second example. Um, here we have a two-wheeler uh, two um, fleet, so personal two-wheelers, uh, 1,000 vehicles. Um, here you could see the specifications. Uh, the driving should be now different for week days and weekend. Um, and for the behavior profile, um, I already entered values. So here you could see that we have home charging with two kilowatts and there's availability of 90%. So 90% of the uh, two wheelers could charge at home. And also there's availability of 40% 40 40 for roadside charging. Um, and these both location types should uh, cover the, 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 the needs. And the, the Preference here is 100% for, for home charging because it's, it's cheaper. Um, but some of the vehicles, of course, cannot charge at home because the availability is only 90%. Here you could see also the time. So it's here, for, it's uh, different for the weekend because we assume that the two wheelers will arrive uh, earlier and with a higher variance in the weekend. Um, for the road, uh, for the road uh, side charging, you see here, it's a little bit more distributed over the day. That's why the variance is it's two hours. And then you could see the results. Um, uh, yeah, here you could see the different the home charging and also the roadside charging. It's more over the day and the um, home charging is it's in the early evening, as we explained before in the, the PowerPoint. And let's imagine that the tool user um, changed now the perspective 
and is interested only in the distribution bit analysis and they are in residential area. So where only um, home buildings are. And now the tool have the option to exclude some location type. So for example, you could exclude the roadside charging now. That means that uh, the modeling part is the same, but only the results we see the home charging. And that could be interesting because now we see the charging need only in the investigated residential area. Um, and uh, yeah, that's also the opportunity of the uh, possibility of the tool. Um, now let's imagine that the, the, the government uh, noticed that it is not um, so, so good for the grid that the, most of the charging is during the early evening. And that's why um, there is some motivation to, um, to um, in increase the workplace charging and the availability. So there are some subsidies and some invest Investigate, uh, investment in, in workplace charging. So let's imagine that the availability uh, in addition to the previous was is now uh, 30% on the weekdays. Of course, there's no um, work charging at the weekend. And also because of the subsidies, the workplace charging could be cheaper. And that's why the workplace preference could uh, be now 50% um, because some people also prefer, uh, prefer charging at home because it's more comfortable. Um, and then you could see in the results now that we have um, more, of course, there's no uh, work charging uh, over, the da over the day or in the, in the morning, and also uh, a decreased uh, charging in the early evening. And uh, the roadside charging is now only needed in the weekend because here is no, uh, um, is no work charging. Yeah, thank you, uh, and that was uh, the demonstration. Thank you. Um, we have received a few questions already. Um, we will start with the practical questions uh, on uh, the availability of the tool, for example. Uh, yes, the tool will be uh, available uh, for free and for everyone on our website. Uh, we will post it later today. It is going uh, through a last round of verification. Apologies for the small delay. Uh, and there will be um, uh, an interactive version, which will al allow you to do exactly what uh, Andreas just showed. Uh, but there will be also, as I mentioned uh, briefly, an API. Uh, so uh, the way uh, to access the Python code through um, uh, an advanced uh, interface that actually enables some additional features. For example, the CO2 emissions will only be available in the, uh, through the API and um, the ad, uh, managed charging strategies of time of use and V1G, so uh, the smart charging will only be available also through the API. All the rest will be available in the um, interface uh, on the web. Um, the, um, on the website where the tool will be uh, located, you will also find a manual and a technical note uh, that allows you to uh, have a, a better understanding of uh, uh, how to use the tool, but also uh, what is the logic of the modeling behind. So in terms of clarifications, um, uh, Andreas, we have received a question on uh, the difference between the percentage of availability and the percentage of preference. Mm -hmm. So the preference has to be, uh, will always be a total of 100% exactly. because uh, you either prefer to charge in a place or another, but why is the availability not uh, totaling 100%? Um, here the idea is that um, an EV driver could have different um, charging opportunities over the day. So let's imagine an EV driver who has the opportunity to charge at home, but also uh, at work. And so um, the availability gives uh, the, the, amount, the, the, the number of charging, uh, of possible charging windows for the, for the user. That does not mean that uh, all these charging windows uh, have to uh, have to be used. Um, so that's the idea that an EV driver could have different charging opportunities over the day, and that's why the total availability of the different charging location types um, could be higher than 100%. Thank you, Andreas. Um, so uh, there was a, uh, another question of clarification on the use of the probability of shifting charging. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so can, you, can you please um, we, we explained briefly what is this probability of shifting charging mm -hmm. and why in your example uh, the 
what, what is the what was the difference between the two? I think it was on slide 16. Um, yeah, maybe I will change 24. Okay, so maybe first a um, uh, um, short explanation to the probability of shifting. So the idea is that um, Normally, the, if we'll come back, if an EV driver come home, comes home with an, uh, come home with his uh, vehicle, the um, state of charge of the battery could be 90%. And then the EV driver would decide to uh, not uh, do not charge um, directly because he think, okay, I have 90% uh, remaining in the battery, so I could charge in the coming days so or tomorrow. So that's the general idea. Um, and the specification of the tool is that when the battery capacity is um, more than 50%, it is allowed to shift charging to the next day to have some, um, some security back in the, in the battery. And the idea is here now that 60% of the EV drivers would decide to shift charging to the next day when it is, if it is possible. So that is the idea. Um, and then um, and the idea is now that there are less charging events because there is not a charging event every day, but when the uh, EV driver charge, the charging event is longer. And that is what you see in the, uh, in the next slides. So here's uh, the normal uh, without sh shifting charging profile. And then you could see there's a lower peak power. That means there's uh, less charging simultaneously but the charging events become longer. And that's, that's the idea of this probability um, of charging. And this is an uh, immigrant, it's modeling of a decision-making process of the EV driver because they decide when they charge and we try with this parameter to, to consider these effects. So we have a very interesting question uh, which comes several times is uh, why don't we have, uh, or whether we address V2G, so vehicle to grid. The reason why, uh, so the answer is no, we don't have vehicle to grid in this uh, tool. Uh, the reason, um, the main reason for that is that uh, it's um, uh, very much dependent on the rest of the system. Uh, and we don't have a full simulation of the power sector behind uh, the, the engine here. Uh, so the, the goal here is to simulate only the EV um, demand. Uh, and not the rest of the system. We have uh, for the CO2 emissions, a very basic uh, version of, a, of a, an economic dispatch. Uh, this is um, uh, quite simplified and it doesn't allow to have really a V2G integrated in this tool. Uh, moreover, uh, the performance of uh, having a, a V2G in an interactive tool would be uh, very difficult. <laughs> So um, unfortunately, we don't have V2G, but we acknowledge the need uh, for it uh, in the future. Um, but since our main audience are uh, low and middle income countries, uh, we believe V2G um, is not a, a very short term um, requirement. Uh, on the other questions related to the use of the tool, uh, I think you made a demonstration, but maybe we can briefly uh, repeat about how can we look at the specific location in the grid, for example, a distribution grid, uh, because indeed uh, this, um, uh, the, the tool simulates the, the whole fleet, uh, assuming a whole system, but it is possible for a user to only uh, look at the impact of charging on a specific uh, location in the system, uh, especially a distribution grid where, for example, home chargers would be located. Um, yeah, so let's repeat that. So we could do it with, with this example. So let's imagine that we have uh, the investigation is now for distribution um, grid and the distribution grid contains um, a mainly um, buildings with um, personal use. So um, um, yeah, homes from, from the people and yeah, the charging, the chargers um, for the home locations are directly connected to these, um, to these buildings. Um, and let's imagine that the work charging is another is another area of the of the uh, of the of the power system and uh, should be not included in the in the investigation. Um, but of course, for the EVs, it's important to simulate both. So the the charging at home in the investigated area, but also the the charging at different locations. 
but now the tool allows to exclude some charging location types. So as uh, as Jack explained, uh, when we only uh, want to uh, look at the home charging, we could um, exclude the workplace and also the um, the roadside charging. And now you uh, now you uh, only see the home charging for the investigated area for the investigated grid. And uh, yeah, for example, you could use these um, profile or this uh, charging profile and add it to the non-EV uh, reference electricity demand and compared with the total uh, capacity of the transformers or something like that. And then you could uh, make some estimations of the of the utilization of the, of the grid. Thank you, Andreas. Um, uh, there was another question related to how to use the tool and whether it can help identify uh, weak points in the charging network. So th this tool is not designed to help you uh, figure out where to locate uh, charging stations, but uh, based on an assumed um, uh, charging uh, station deployment, you can uh, try and uh, understand how the impact on the grid would be. Um, so it's uh, if you know where the uh, charging locations are uh, and you can, um, as uh, Andreas showed, uh, select, uh, let's say, the, the power drawn from these different locations, you can actually compare the uh, power required for the EV charging to uh, the strength of the grid. So this is one thing that you can do with the tool. Um, otherwise, there was another question uh, that you may address, uh, mm -hmm. address for example. Um, I, will, I will distort a bit the question, but it was uh, asking whether there was an experience somewhere uh, with 200 city buses and what could be the impact on the grid. But I think uh, this is something we could simulate in this tool um, and uh, a user could have a look. Uh, I think your example with the 25 or 50 buses uh, could be extended to uh, 200 buses. Of course. <clears throat> so um, let's um, put here 200 uh, buses. Um, um, of course, now it's uh, the question is what is the charging strategy? Let's um, uh, let's imagine for this example that we have, uh, like in the example before, also 200 chargers, so that the availability would be um, would be 100%. Uh, and um, and then of course uh, when we go to the results, um, the peak power uh, we have of course we have to change it back to the unmanaged case and. Um, and then, yeah, you see we have 15 megawatt uh, peak power, uh, around 15 megawatt of peak power. Of course, that's a lot, and that uh, I think that would uh, that would uh, overload the grid normally. And um, of course, it depends on the on the on the grid configuration. But now you are able to to see the load. But yeah, the tool provides the option to reduce the peak power when you apply balanced charging, for example. And then you could see what we um, uh, that we could house the peak power, and of course, it's a high impact. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, a few more questions coming in on the use of the tool. First of all, um, there will be a, a contact email uh, on the tool, so we will be glad to receive uh, feedback and questions if uh, the um, manual will not be sufficient. Um, so uh, please uh, use that uh, contact email. Uh, otherwise, um, in terms of export, uh, so the tool allows to export, um, uh, will allow to export uh, a CSV file indeed uh, to um, or an Excel sheet uh, with the data uh, generated with the demands uh, managed or unmanaged. And the user can then uh, create his own curve uh, in the format he likes. So this will be available um, when the tool will be uh, put online. Uh, now we have also a few more interesting questions on the um, uh, impact of different parameters on the uh, on the charging. Um, can you tell uh, something about uh, how the battery capacity uh, may impact the charging behavior? Mm -hmm, of course. So, um, for example, it could be that the battery capacity is too low to come over the whole day. So let's imagine we have an, we have an LDV, some personal car, and on one day there's a really huge um, driving range. And then the battery capacity could not um, uh, large, enough, uh, large enough to uh, to cover the whole driving. And then um, it could be changed from location type. So it could be that from only one charging doing the 
uh, at the uh, at the home location. It could be also that there is a recharge uh, recharge event, for example, en route, so that the EV driver decides to use the en route to location to recharge with a very high power, um, doing a, a small uh, period of time to recharge the vehicle and continue driving. And that is what you see in the charging behavior. So that's why the battery um, has an influence on the charging behavior. Thank you, Andres. Uh, I think our time is up um, and we thank everyone for staying until the end. I have a last um, uh, maybe thing to say is that um, the, the next steps for us will be to uh, uh, work with the uh, regional platforms because we want to disseminate this tool further uh, with um, uh, the Jeff countries and their representatives. So we will uh, have uh, roadshows uh, with the, coordinated by the regional platforms of uh, Latin America, Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, and um, Eastern Europe and uh, Central Asia. Um, and uh, that we will do in coming weeks. So if you are a member of one of those uh, countries, uh, we will uh, certainly have uh, the opportunity to see uh, each other again. Um, and uh, otherwise, uh, we look forward to your feedback um, uh, coming uh, in the coming days. Uh, you will have the tool available later today with the um, explanation note and the API will be posted at the end of the week. So uh, please stay updated. And uh, I think I will hand uh, over back to uh, Per for the concluding words. Thank you very much, uh, Jacques, and also thanks to Andreas for excellent presentations. Uh, I don't think I have to add much uh, from my side. You, you did a good sum up of, uh, of the next step and also anyone, of course, interested uh, in Knowing more, also looking at uh, providing more information to us, of course, don't hesitate to reach out to Jacques and, and colleagues as well. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, we're two minutes past the deadline, which is not too bad. But of course, wish you all uh, a very nice rest of the day. Thank you very much.